Genesis 39, verse 1. When you have it, say amen. amen. And the word of God says, When Joseph was taken to Egypt by the Ishmaelite traders, he was purchased by Potiphar, an Egyptian officer. Potiphar was captain of the guards for Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. The Lord was with Joseph. Just kind of glance to your left and tell, say the Lord was, is with you. That's the theme throughout Joseph's life. Periodically, the scripture will affirm that the Lord was with Joseph. God is with you in the midst of your in-betweens. Even when you don't feel like it, he's with you. And so because the Lord was with Joseph, the word of God says in chapter 2, I mean verse 2, it says, So he succeeded in everything he did, and he served in the home of his Egyptian master. As he serves. Potiphar noticed this. See, when you're serving, you, that's how you get noticed. <laughs> he was noticed because he was serving in his Egyptian master's home. Potiphar noticed this and realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success in everything he did. So success comes from God. We say, I know that, Pastor. This pleased Potiphar. So he soon made Joseph his personal armor bearer, attendant. He put him in charge. Thank you for turning the lights up. He put him in charge of the entire household and everything he owned. For the day Joseph was put, from that day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household, the property of the Lord began, of the other. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless part of his household for Joseph's sake. Ooh. God will strategically place you in places because he want to bless those places because you there. That's why it's good. That's why I'm taking my time and reading because God is speaking. From the day Joseph was put in charge of his master's household and property, the Lord began to bless part of his household for Joseph's sake. All the household, all his household affairs ran smoothly, and his crops and livestock flourished. So Potiphar gave Joseph complete administrative responsibility over everything he owned. With Joseph there, he did not worry about anything except what kind of food he was going to eat. Let's go a little further. Joseph was a very handsome, like Pastor Peoples and well-built young man. <laughs> and verse seven says, and Potiphar's wife, boy, the enemy is cunning and crafty. And Potiphar's wife soon began to look at him lustfully, come and sleep with me, she demanded. But watch the character of Joseph. But Joseph refused. At this time, he's a young teenager. Look, he told her, my master trusts me with everything in his entire household. Verse 9, no one here has more authority than I do. He has held back nothing from me except you because you are his wife. Joseph, a teenager. Y'all listen to me, teenagers. He said this, how could I do such a wicked thing? It would be a great sin against God. Even though he corrected the man of God's wife, look what she did. Verse 10. She kept putting pressure on Joseph day after day, but he refused to sleep with her, and he kept out of her way. The Bible says, shun the very appearance of evil as much as possible. Father, thank you for the believers. Save somebody's soul. Reclaim someone that's on the outside. Bring them back to the family of God, vertical and then horizontal. Father God, speak to the hearts of the people. Remove, Father God, any wrong theology. Change our perspective, Father God. Give us biblical perspective in the name of Jesus. Change our outlook so that our outcomes may change as well. We thank you for a privilege and an honor to be in your presence. Let your kingdom come and let your kingdom mandate manifest. In Jesus' name we pray. Please say amen. amen. Go ahead and be seated. 
as I stated, you can go to the subscribe to the YouTube. I go to YouTube, my God, and look at port uh, series number point number one, my God, when I spoke about embracing your in between. So I'm going to move a little quickly, but I want you to try to put yourself in Joseph's shoes for a moment. As I stated a few weeks ago, he's 17 years old. You are the favored son in the family of 12 sons. Your father has chosen you to be the head of the family. You have been given a beautiful robe to symbolize this fact. You are on the pathway at 17 to power, influence, and prominence. And then all of a sudden, in a moment, everything shifts mm, in your life. Are you prepared for the shift? Are you prepared that if you happen to walk into your job and they tell you, I do not need your services no more? Have you been a good steward over the surplus and increase in your life? Or, are you, or have we mismanaged the increase? See, you got to properly prepare yourself. That's why I thank God for discipleship, because discipleship has taught me. I can't speak on you, but I can talk about me. The importance of being able to honor God and also honor me by putting some up. Because I know that life tends to take a turn immediately. My God. So are you, let me ask you that again, prepared for life to shift? How are you stewarding your life? We're talking about in relation to money, but let's take it off of money. How are you ruling, kingdom talk now, your life? You and I are commanded by God to rule our life well. That means be a good steward over your time, talent, and treasure. Because it's so critical, my God, that you and I learn how to rule our life well. That don't mean be in control of every area of your life because you got to give up your control so God can take control. But when God gives you control, rule well. You got to give up your control and give your control to God. But when God gives you some control, control by ruling that what he's given you well. Are y'all with me so far? Okay, y'all, y'all not. Okay, okay. I'm going to teach you. And so here it is, my God, the young Joseph is in a situation. Uh, he's on his way to prominence, as I stated. And then all of a sudden, life shifts. Mm. On the surface, my God, it seems that circumstances could not get even worse for the young Joseph. But in reality, those difficult days were stepping stones to a path of greater glory. Joseph, my God, it found himself in trouble because of his dreams. His dreams in the natural seemed like they had been shattered. But God, who gave the man of God his dreams, was working behind the scenes. I know some of you this morning feel like God has left you. I know some of you is doing it blind. And you're trying to feel where he's at. Like I said, you got to be able to follow God when you can't trace God. You got to be able to go by faith. My God, we're living in an hour where people, people's uh, 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 devotion is more dependent on external things than it is of God. Our faith is in everything but God. And God is the only thing that's going to outlast this world. But our faith and our trust and our hope, my God, is in our wives, our children, our jobs, our 401ks. It's in the stock market. It's what we got invested in, my God. Put your faith and put your hope, my God, in God. Because that is the only thing that's going to be able to sustain you when life shifts. Mm. So Joseph's life has shifted. And as Bishop Neil, Neil Ellis has taught me, my God, you have to learn how to, my God, embrace. I call it embrace. He calls it the in-between. But you have to embrace your in-between because let me help you understand something. God gave Joseph a dream, but he didn't tell. He showed Joseph that he would be second in command. He would be the prime minister, my God, of the power force nation in the world at that time. But he never told Joseph or showed Joseph what he's going to have to go through to fulfill his assignment. God has given many of you dreams. Don't stop dreaming. Keep dreaming. Some of you already know what your plan and your assignment is in life. Oh, my God, but you got to prepare your mind for action. That's what the Word of God say. Action, action. Prepare your mind, my God, for, for God to disrupt your life. If you're going to do what God has called you to do, you got to get ready to, because God will interrupt. God will interrupt and disrupt <laughs> your life, my God, to fulfill uh, the purpose in your life. Come on, somebody. That's why he has to be Lord and Savior. If he's just saving, you're thinking God behind what he did on Calvary. But when he become capital L-O-R-D, your allegiance is to him. And so when your allegiance is to God, you have a nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Please don't miss this word today. Embrace yourself today. 
Get your pen and your paper out today. Because let me help you understand some church. Many people in this church and in other churches in the body of Christ, by God, is frustrated because they have not learned how to embrace the in between on your way to where God has taken you. And so we begin to squander off. We begin to get upset when trials and tribulations come. When things, my God, that we used to understand, we don't understand now. When God has turned your life completely upside down, you think that God is mad at you. Or you think, my God, that you ain't sin. Or you think, my God, that maybe God didn't tell me that. That's not true. Because Joseph was going through some serious situation and God was behind the scene still working, executing, my God. Some of the things, my God, that got you confused right now. It ain't the devil is God executing his will in your life trying to get you prepared my God for where he's taking you my God because God know my God those areas in our life that's unhealthy he know those things in our life that can't go with us he know the people in your life can't go with you so he got to begin to clip he got to begin to trim he got to cause you to adjust and adapt because he's working out his will in the middle of a will in your life my God and so quit getting frustrated because you're in the in between and say God teach me how to walk Teach me how to journey. Teach me how to embrace. Shift my perspective. Shift my outlook about what I'm going through. Yeah, 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 yeah. The young Joseph was in the midst of a major storm. And so point one, two weeks ago was God protected him in the midst of what he was going through because God the one gave him the dream. If your dream comes from God, guess what? He's going to protect your dream. If your dream didn't come from God, you might be out there on your own. Yeah, God is bound by his word to make sure that he protect what he called for, he provides for. Yes, sir. So that's why you got to make sure that what you're trying to accomplish, what you're trying to produce, the dream you're trying to fulfill, make sure it's God. Some of us is living false prophetic things that were spoken in our lives because somebody said this and said you were supposed to be this and you were supposed to do that. And you know, and you've been trying to live and fulfill up a false prophecy, my God, that never came from God. You ain't even asked God, God, was that you? Was that really you? Because sooner or later, something got to change. It can't always be like this. My God, my, come on, somebody. So, so watch what I just said. Now, that's very, very important. How many of us are living off of false prophecies? That's why you got to be very, very careful. Jesus said, be careful how you heard and what you heard. Test the spirit by the spirit. And so God protected Joseph. Even in the midst of the pit, the prison, on his way to, to the palace, he was protected. Get that in your mind. How can I be protected at 17, 18, and I'm in a pit? I've been sold. I've been lied on, I've been abandoned. I've been dropped. I've been misused. And you telling me, Pastor, that God is protecting me? Yes, he is. Some of y'all don't feel like that. If you don't feel like that, raise your hand. Look at y'all scared to raise your hand. You know you don't feel like God protecting you in the midst of your storm. But God, in the midst of everything that Joseph was going through, was protecting him. So point number two, in the midst of him protecting him, he went to promoting him. This is where we pick it up at. As I told y'all, pain has a way of producing power. Power is not always in volume. Pain has a way of, uh, of uh, and the pain of affliction and the pain of fire has a way of formulating and building your character, yeah. honing your integrity, yeah. Yeah. teaching you how to be a man and a woman of your word. See, God had to send the man of God through a series of events on his way to becoming the prime minister because, see, God knew where he was going, Pastor Tedrick. And as a young teenager, God had to allow some things to be fused <laughs> into his character, fused into his belief system, fused into his emotions, my God. God had to teach him how to be faithful of a little because I'm going to bless you with much. Can you handle two people, the cupbearer and the baker? That's your church in prison. Two people. I'm going to give you a nation, but if, can you pastor two people before you try to pastor 200 people? Joseph had to pastor two people in prison before he can get yeah. the, the whole nation. Yeah. Preparation is never time wasted. Yeah. Yeah. Are y'all with me so far? And so God was fusing some stuff inside of Joseph. He's preparing him along the way. That's why I thank God as a young pastor, I ain't never got off the potter's wheel. 
I ain't never stopped allowing the people and the voices that has helped me get to where I'm at, my God, to continue to train me. As I told y'all, you see me up there by myself, but it's a whole lot of people. Some of you are here and some of them are not here that has helped me become, my God, who I am and it will help me go where God is taking me. But Joseph had to be faithful over the two before he could take over the nation. He's preparing him for where he's going. And so the pain that God allowed Joseph to go to and experience was all preparation for the assignment. See, we got some tall assignments on us. That's why, my God, it feels so heavy because the assignment is great. Why am I always going through this? Why is this happening to me and my kids? Why is this going on? Uh, and, 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 she, and, and she ain't going through that or he ain't going through that because their assignment ain't your assignment. Yeah. That's why you, it's dangerous to compare yourself by other people. Paul warns us that in Corinthians, quit comparing yourself with other people. Are y'all with me so far? So point number two, God promoted the young man of God. Turn with me to Genesis 39. Let's put a little word on it. Is we helping anybody so far? 39.19, it says, Potiphar was furious when he heard his wife's story. She lied on him just to bring context and bring you up to speed about how Joseph had treated her. Verse 20 says, so he took Joseph and threw him into the prison where the king's prisoners were held. See, this is, remember what I told y'all, God is behind the scenes working. So this woman wouldn't let up off of him. And so she finally lied. You got to read the story to catch me. My God, so now he's put in prison, but he's put in a strategic prison, Pastor Champ, a strategic prison that the king has. He just wasn't put in any ordinary prison. <laughs> he was put in the king's prison. Now watch this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it, it says, uh, but the Lord was with Joseph in the prison. And showed him his faithful love. And the Lord made Joseph, watch this, a favorite with the prison warden. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge. Stop right there. Joseph was already, his assignment already will have him in charge of the greatest nation at that time. And so God began to work it out. Because the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. And Joseph found favor with the people that was in charge. And so they promoted George, I mean Joseph, my God, and put him in charge of the prison. See, God was teaching the young warrior leadership right there. Teaching him, my God, how to rule well, my God. Because Potiphar didn't did concern himself for nothing going on in the prison. And so everything was left to the young Joseph. And so he had to learn. He had to stand up on his feet. As Bishop taught me, you got to learn how to adjust and adapt and stand up on your feet. So right then, even in prison, there are some tough lessons that's learned in the prisons of life. Come on. I learned a lot of great principles when I was in prison, in real prison, my God. There's principles, my God, that God want to teach you, my God, why you in your prison. Uh, it's good for me that I was afflicted in prison. It's good that you feel some pressure while you're in your prison. Come on. Some of you are really in prison, my God. But God is working it out. God was with Joseph. And you got to tell yourself, in the midst of what I'm feeling, in the midst of what I'm going through, God is executing his will and the Lord is with me. Say that. The Lord is with me. Come on. Decree that. Say the Lord is with me. Come on. Say it again. The Lord is with me. So God has already favored. God has already favored young Joseph and given him authority. And favor in the prison. Let's go a little deeper. Before long, the warden put Joseph in charge of all the other prisoners and over everything that happened in the prison. So he had a church in prison. He had leadership in prison. He had responsibility in prison. He had oversight in prison. He had to think like a leader going on for Christ in prison. Everything started and ended with him in prison. The Lord was with Joseph in prison. This is part of the in-between on his way to being the prime minister of the most powerful nation in the world. But he had to stop by prison. Ooh. On his way to purpose. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Mm. So, 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 the, the warden had no more worries. See, when white people get in right leadership, baby, we ain't gonna have too many worries. See, we won't have to manage. It's dangerous when we have to manage people that we put in place to manage. That means they are being irresponsible with the stewardship of management or leading. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to catch that for your business. That's a business principle right there, Barry. My God, if you put people in place and you got to do their job for them, you got the wrong people in leadership. The Bible says that the warden didn't have to worry about nothing else. He placed Joseph. God sent him a man, woman of God, my God, to manage and run the affairs of the prison. 
Uh oh, everybody, don't nobody want to go to a prison. We think of a prison. I'm not talking about physical prison like your pastor was in. I'm talking about your physical, I'm talking about your prisons in life. My God, those are, those, those are, they, 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 they prisons in life, but they purpose in life. So shift your outlook concerning the things that you're going through. Yes, it feels like prison, but there's purpose in the prison that you're going through. Come on, let's give God a hand right quick. So the warden had no more worries because Joseph took care of everything. That means Joseph was responsible. Can I tell you something? Let me give you a principle. Let me take you up higher. Whatever God has given you in the natural, understand that God gave it to you. And so you're bound to be faithful. You're bound to be responsible. That's why it's very frustrating when you have people, my God, oh, that you place in different places in your life, and they become irresponsible. Uh, Y'all know I said how soon people forget. If, if you have been placing any, any leadership in your, in your, on your job, you should be, my God, understanding, my God, by now that you are supposed to be responsible. Because the Bible says everything that we do, do it as unto the Lord. See, you think you're working for the people that gave you the position, but you really, as a Christian, is working and serving God. So be responsible. Don't squander away opportunities to let your aroma change the atmosphere. Oh, my God, the Bible says that Joseph was serving, and the man of God took notice of him. Let your work stand out. Let things about you be different than anybody else on the workforce. Uh, when your unsaved friends come over to your house, don't let them see dishes and dust and kids acting crazy, cars unkept. Come on, no vacuums in the, no lines in the vacuum on the carpet. Come on, somebody, my God, let, let your life stand out, my God. Let things be different about you, because I promise you, people in this day and time, my God is looking for something that they can identify with that's good. There's a lot of pain and suffering going on in the world, saved and unsaved people, my God. And when they come around you, they they should feel empowered, my God. They should they should feel like they can do this, my God. They should feel, my God, motivated, my God, or recharged, my God, when they come in contact with your life. Christians, Joseph was responsible. Are you being responsible with the task that God has given you? No, we ain't. Some is and some ain't. And if you're not, please do yourself a favor. Make sure you say, God, please forgive me. Because when you first got the responsibility, or you first got the promotion, or you first got the job, you was grateful. You got there early. You had a pleasant attitude. My God, you were submitted and su you was submitted and committed. But now you justifying why you don't need to do what you need to do. See, now you have shift from being thankful and grateful to being you're out of order. Let me leave it at that. And God sees. We talking about God no more heart. He sees how you just shifted in your attitude. You had an attitude of thanksgiving when you got everything. And now look at you. Yeah. Yeah. Everything was thank you, Jesus. Everything was you hurried up, ran down there and paid your tithes and gave it off when you needed something. Yeah. But sooner or later, my God, your attitude has shifted concerning what God has told you to be a good steward of. Yeah. That's dangerous. It's a lot of principles being spoken in the atmosphere. Catch it. Yeah. Joseph was responsible. He never mismanaged. If you read the story of Joseph, he never mismanaged none of his responsibilities and because God could trust him God promoted him y'all heard me always tell the church be careful are you ready to handle what you're asking God for because what you're asking God for guess what oh my God there's an in-between connected to where you ask God for so Joseph is in his in-between I had a dream he told his, his father and his brothers and they began to hate him Potiphar saw the hand of God upon the life of Joseph. He knew there was something special about this Hebrew boy. I got a sailor right there, and I'm going to move quickly. Lord, have mercy. Uh, I'm going to leave that alone because I need to keep rolling. My God. I mean, uh, but I can identify because when I came home and God led me to Greenwood Christian Center, now known as Transformation Church, God gave a, a former gangster, a former drug addict, a former junkie favor with the overseer, Bishop Gary McIntosh. And it brought a lot of persecution to me and even her. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? Because I was young, raw, and I was hungry like I still am 24 years later. And people was envious and people was jealous because the man of God took a liking. 
because he embraced me, my God, because of the way I function. My God, it's easier to pastor people who is brand new to the faith, who ain't got a lot of church and religion in them. When you got people, my God, that's hungry, dirty, dies, and desperate for God, and just want to live right. I wasn't thinking about being no pastor. I didn't know I was called. I was just glad to be free and know that I'm being responsible, know that my wife and children love me, my God. I was just grateful for that, brother peoples, my God. I wasn't thinking about no pastor. And God gave me favor with the man of God. You know, when he would go out and preach, my God, and I would be there. He never asked me to go. When he would go places and preach, I would just be there because I was dusty. I was hungry. And he was downloading him and downloading him. And sooner or later, the man of God took notice of me. About two and a half years later, my God, he took notice of me. And he began to bring me a little closer. And then when he shifted the church, my God, from doing church to discipleship, my God, they, uh, and he picked his 12, and I was one of the 12. Jesus had 12 and Bishop had 12 and he passed the church through the 12. My God, and I pick, he, he picked me in. And so he just got out of prison. What he, why Bishop, I should hear, why Bishop always with Juju? Why Bishop always with Lawrence? He radical. He, he, he too hard. And, and, and I don't got to go through all of that type of stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sharing my in between. People dislike me. Come on, son. He got a flow with me. People dislike me. My God, people talked about me. People got jealous of me. And I didn't do nothing. I'm just serving. I'm just walking. I'm just serving God. I'm just flipping the pages. I'm just praying. I'm just fasting, my God. I ain't bothering nobody. I'm in love with God. What happened was, they was terrified because of my hunger. They was envious of my pursuit of God. And oh my God, some of those same people today, I can't get nobody to say nothing. Look at Pastor Juju today. My God. Oh. Come on, Christian. Come on, Christian. Yes, sir. So therefore, I just kept walking in my in-between. See, you got the baby to embrace everything, my God, leading you to where God is taking you. I said that not to make me look good, to encourage you. That there's going to be some haters that rise up against you. There's going to be some people that don't like you. There's going to be some things that you don't understand. There's going to be some hardships and trials and weights and trials that you got to go through on your way to where God is taking you. But can you manage that? And so that's why T.D. Jakes told the church, don't get bitter, get better. Trust me, everything that come out of my spirit is to help you. I don't need to boast. It is what it is with my life. I'm trying to help you. Straight up. My God. So, 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 Paula, for watch Joseph work. Your work has an opportunity to promote you. That job that you become, it may be paying you beneath, beneath what you re, who you really are. It may not be the pay, might, might, might not be paying you what you're worth, but be found faithful and watch what God do. Yeah. And so because Joseph in prison, now watch this, in affliction, baby, in pain, he's in prison, not because he committed a crime like I did, Christian. He's in prison, oh my God, because he maintained, oh my God, because he stood, Antoinette, my God, on integrity and on character. And he said, how can I sin against my king? I am in charge of the whole palace. Only thing is off limits to me, Joseph said to the woman of God, is you. And so now he finds himself in prison behind his integrity. Dirty dads behind his character, behind his devotion, behind his commitment. Behind his standards, my God. Oh, my God. For God, my God. I promise you, my God. Oh, my God. Will you stand for righteousness at this day and time? Don't you know the Bible says blessed to be envied? That's what that means. Oh, my God. Is the person, my God, you will, be, you, will, you will be persecuted behind righteousness sake. Don't think that everything good is going to come to you because you're doing the right thing. There's a level of pain connected to living right. There's a level of dis, uh, uh, people will, will, will despise you when you stand for sanctification and holiness. People, like I teach y'all, don't want to be pre a pastor, they want to be preached to. Oh my God, but Joseph stood out because of his integrity, because of his character, but also because of the way he served. He was faithful. The Bible says God shows himself faithful to those who are faithful. See, sometimes you got to be found faithful where you're planted at. And if you, my God, if you're doing anything, let me go, let me be vulnerable to the church now. If you're doing anything around her and anybody looking online that's not her that's serving her, if you're doing anything around her because you want me and this woman right here to see it, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. And if you never get promoted, don't blame me, blame yourself because your motives is wrong. Because promotion comes from the Lord. Promotion don't come from me and it don't come from her. It comes from the Lord. Who am I talking to in the church? So you got to make sure your motives is right, baby, because promotion comes from the Lord. And when you've been found faithful, when you've been found faithful, 
Yep. My God, when you're doing and carrying on your business with the right motive, with the right attitude, my God. Oh, my God, you helping build and not tear down. My God, God going to promote you. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Potter promoted Joseph and made him an overseer of the entire household. See, right there, and I'm moving quickly. Right there, God, through the warden, promoted Joseph and made him the overseer. See, God was right there training him for where he was taking him. He gave him authority in the king's palace, oversight, leadership in the palace. He got lied on, now he's in the pit. All this is refinement. All this is preparation. See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, God was training him for where he was taking him. God is training you, y'all. For where he's taking you. Dirty dads, he's training you. That's why it's painful. For where he's taking you. Pastor, are you listening to me, man? Listen to your pastor. I had to go through it, so you got to go through it. Jesus said they persecuted me, which you make that thing gonna persecute you. There's a level of mm, suffering that go along with this calling that's on our lives, man of God. And he's preparing you for where he's taking you, man of God. Embrace. Somebody say embrace. Embrace. Embrace your in-between. Oh my God. So here he is, the man of God, the man of God, the man of God. My God is in a situation uh, and he did nothing. What do you do when you're in a situation and you didn't do nothing? Now, don't justify and say, I didn't do nothing, but you did. We know, we know Joseph didn't do anything, but God was with Joseph. Look at your name and say, God was with Joseph. Joseph was in control of everything that happened in Potiphar's home. Potiphar learned that he could trust Joseph to do the right thing. See, people will watch you. Janice, you'll like this one. People will watch you. I love you, son. You hear me? You hear me? Okay. People will watch you before they promote you. That's why you cannot do what you do because you want somebody to see you. That's why you got to just do it because that's just integrity. That's just character. I'm just being faithful to God. I don't care if you don't never see me. God sees me. See, that got to be your mindset. See, see, see. And so, so, so why Joseph? Because his motive was right. I'm trying to teach the church. Stay with me. Because his motive was right. He served right. And when you serve right, you get noticed right. Because some of us has been promoted by people that didn't really have the authority to promote you. That's why when you got it, you only had it for a season. Now you don't got it. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. Who am I? Ah! You've been promoted, my God, for by people who didn't have the authority to promote you. That's why you was there for a season. Now you're not there. That's part of the plan, too. Give God a hand for that. <laughs> that smoke TV, man. Amen. I didn't know I forgot about that man of God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Potiphar, the pagan e e uh, Egypt, uh, I mean, Egyptians saw something different in the life of Joseph. In the life of Joseph. Do people around you, when you leave 205, do they see anything different? When you show up tomorrow, if the Lord glad is coming, do the office, do the supervisor, do the team. Would they see anything different? Or would they see the same sluggish, always quoting scripture Christian, but this is the aroma. This is the attitude. Always complaining. Always griping. Always thinking somebody owe you something. Always thinking somebody did you wrong. Always thinking somebody overlooked you. You being overlooked because your attitude ain't right. You're being overlooked because you're not managing what God gave you to manage. You're being overlooked because you're ungrateful and unthankful for what God has done for you, my God. Are you listening to me, church? I'm trying to help you, not hurt you. My God, a lot of us is disqualifying ourselves for promotion because our attitude is out of order. Even though you stand, you walk in, you know what I'm saying, standing up, my God, upright, but in your spirit, when people get close to you, the aroma's foul. You walk in, hey, good morning, how you doing? But, hey, no, about 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you're going to show who you really is. <laughs> Reason why I say that, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to help the church. You know what? Because, see, that wasn't Joseph's attitude. If you look at the scripture, I'm moving. Joseph had every reason, woman of God, to be bitter. I told my dreams to people who were supposed to love me, my brothers and my family. They stole me in a pit, sold me. I'm in a foreign country, and I need to, 
And I don't even know how to speak their language. See, God was preparing Joseph. I'm going deep now, man of God. He was preparing them for ways to take it, so he had to learn, Tiki, another language. And so there's certain pit stops along the way that Joseph had to encounter because he was shifting his, his verbiage. He was teaching them a new language so he could be able to minister to the people who... So he could be able to speak to dirty guys, the people that he was going to be called a pastor. Mm. <sighs> and so he had to put him around some different people who don't talk and speak the same language that he speaks so that he can learn his language. It's, and our time, Sister Nisa, is called Spanish. I got to learn some Spanish. If I knew Spanish, this church would be running over right now. I might need to learn that. Somebody need to learn how to speak Spanish in this church, man. Hey! Somebody need to learn how to speak Spanish in this church. Lord, send me some Spanish people. Some Spanish speakers. Amen. See, I'm trying to show y'all that everything along the way and this in between mattered and it was preparation for where he was going. He had to learn a new language to be able to speak to the people that he was called to lead when he got to second in command, woman of God. It's heavy, man. It's heavy. Oh, my God. The life he had lived, the life Joseph lived, y'all, it proclaimed the glory of God. Not what he said. That's why y'all heard me say, lifestyle still matters. Your lifestyle will proclaim. When you live a sanctified, laser-focused life, it will set you apart. Can I help you understand this? Please write this down for my note takers. I type it on your phone, iPad. Anytime promotion comes, there's always separation first. God will separate you before he promotes you. He separated Joseph before he promoted Joseph. <laughs> separation. So why are you getting mad? Because God has separated you. Because you don't understand the providence of God. You don't understand the sovereignty. I'm sorry of God. Separation always comes before promotion, Toya. God, Abraham. Genesis 12, leave your family. Leave everything that's familiar to you. Because I'm going to take you somewhere. But I can't do it while you're sitting with the people that you are familiar with. See, God put Joseph in a place that was completely foreign to him. Watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He just gave this to me. Oh, Grant, watch this, watch this, watch this. He placed him and put him in a, in a, with people who he couldn't speak their language. He had to learn their customs. He had to learn their ways. Oh, I'm teaching y'all, my God. He had to learn how their culture and all that type of stuff, my God. And guess what? He put him in a place, watch this, thank you, Holy Ghost, that made him completely uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Completely uncomfortable, but completely dependent on God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uncomfortable, Stacy, but completely dependent on God. See, you need to be put in some uncomfortable places. See, that's some new behaviors that you got to learn that's godly. That's some new attitudes that you got. Oh, my God, why did they put me back? That person at work. Oh, y'all know how she is, my God. No, 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 no. See, that's a divine connection that you need, my God. Some of the very people you stand away from is some of the very people you need. Some of the very people you don't like is some of the very people you need. Oh, my God. You don't want to get around them because you got to pay a price to be around them. I said, you don't want to get around them because you got to pay a price to get around them. Oh, we don't want to be around nobody that's going to make us uncomfortable. We don't want to be around nobody that's going to stretches oh my god that's why they lost many of them on the road because i don't compromise this walk baby yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's why they lost a lot of them because they ain't no compromise woman of god in this walk period and so we don't want to be around nobody that's gonna hold us accountable you want to be nobody that got that prophetic that can see past all that fakeness and hippo all that old jumping and shouting but you ain't living nothing You'll stay away from them type of people. You'll leave that type of church if it's going to hold you accountable and tell you to quit horn around and smoking dope and all that type of stuff. We don't want to be around that, my God. Yeah, we don't want to be around that type of church. Yeah, we go out there and jump, shout, holler, and scream, and all that. Say hallelujah, all that. Leave something. Oh, my God, my microphone. Leave something. That's why I'm not popular. And I ain't trying to be popular, I'm trying to be right. Let's go a little deeper. Oh, Pastor, you might have to give me my watch. I'm going to lose the time. The hand of the Lord opened the door for Joseph to share his faith. Some of the situations you're in, the hand of the Lord is trying to open the door so you can share your faith. There's some places God is trying to place you. Let me move. Because uh, he's trying to get you to share your faith. Please don't squander away an opportunity to let your light shine. Are you listening to me?
The lives we should live be, should be so different from the world around us. That's the mark of God's favor. It will clearly be seen. The favor of God will clearly be on your life yes, Lord. when you strive to live a sanctified, obedient life. Yes, Lord. I'm going to read something from you from Bishop Ellis. He said, we can't just be obedient to what God said. We have to be willing and obedient. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Willing, because he, willing means your will get out the way and his will gets in the way. And see, when you think about all the stuff you got to go through, if your will is submitted to God, you'll go through it. But if your will ain't submitted to God, you'll compromise. You'll try to get out of it. My God, you'll try to find another way. Uh, you'll say, God, not my will. I mean, you'll say, God, God, if it be thy will, let this trial pass. Let this situation pass. That's why you got to be willing and obedient. You got to be willing to go through if you're going to fulfill your assignment. You got to be willing to embrace and handle the in-between if you're going to fulfill your assignment in life. You got to be willing to accept everything to go along with your assignment. I'm sorry if God, thank you, thank you, Holy Ghost, if God showed me and my wife, and if God showed some of y'all, oh my God, oh, all the things that you would have to experience and embrace, you'll tap out. So God got to give it to you when you can handle it. So he prepares you for each stage. He prepares you for each promotion. It's preparation to promotion. And so God said, okay, I got to reveal some more to him. He passed that test. Okay, took him a minute. He stayed there seven years. He should have been there five years. So he wasted two years. My God complaining. My God comp compromising. Y'all missed that. My God, it took you seven years, my God, but you should have got it in five because the last, because you complained and murmured and come on somebody. And so you wasted time because your will ain't submitted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, somebody give God a hand. Okay, watch this. So we talked about Joseph had a dream. He had a dream that he was going to be second in command, but God didn't show him everything that was going to go through it. Listen to this right here. A dream doesn't drive you, it draws you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, write that down, man of God. A dream doesn't drive you, it draws you. What's drawing you? Because there's a balance on the other side of that, too. Because flesh can draw you, too. Sin can draw you too. Sin is pleasurable for a season. What is that thing? Like that? Y'all remember that movie New Jack City? He said, the dope just calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me. Call. What's calling you? What's waking you up? Is it a casino? Is it some woman that ain't your wife? Is it some good dody that they got out on the market now? Is it that porn? Yeah, we talk about that at going over Christ Church. I'm sorry, but it is what it is at this piece of real estate. My God, what is it? What is it? What is it? Yeah, okay, let's take it off all that type of stuff. Is it uh, you always conforming because you want to fit in? Is it compromise? How about lying on your taxes? Okay, this is a one that we all need to say. We all need to say something about. I learned this from John Bavir. That's why it's good to study and flip the pages. Okay, how about this right here? We all guilty, so we all need to repent, including your pastor. Yeah. Telling people, when people ask you to pray for them, you say, I'm going to pray for you, and you don't pray for them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know what that's called? Dirty dad, that's called lying. I don't hear nothing about we forgot we lied because we didn't do what we said we was going to do. That's a lack of integrity. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. It's a lack of integrity. Uh, so guess what? If we, so, oh, oh, oh thank you, go. So if we lie to people horizontal, and so we tell the God, oh my God, 2019, I'm going to read my Bible every day. I'm just going to pray every day. My God, oh, we made rash promises. We ain't fulfilled them. We just lied to God. That's why God said, I hate a liar. See, we are, that's why I'm telling y'all, you never come in the presence of the Lord and you think that the Spirit of God ain't going to find something. When you say, Spirit of God, search me, he going to find something. Lord, forgive me for lying. What? That pastor said that? Yes. Yes. If you want you a holy seminary pastor, then find you somewhere else to go. Come on, somebody. Because I bet you they lying too. Sit long enough. I bet you they lying too. Sit long enough. Don't let the popularity, don't let the signs of the ministry fool you, baby. Gotta get my mic fixed. My mic got to get fixed, man. Let's go to point number three. So God promoted him. Promoted him. He promoted him. 
He promoted him. He promoted him, but he's promoted him through trials. He promoted him through affliction. He promoted him through his pit. He, Joseph was left abandoned. He was dropped. He was lied on. He was misunderstood. His family forsaked him. But the Bible says that the Lord was with him. In the midst of abandonment, in prison, for something I did not do, my family has left me. But God is strategic. You and I, I and you serve a strategic God. As I told y'all in the introduction, even behind the scenes, God was working. If you begin to accept this last point, or everything that God has said, you need to understand that the very thing that got you bent out of shape, the very situation that you have encountered, got you bent out of shape. The things that you see with our natural eyes got you not trusting God. The things that we hear with our natural ears got us questioning are we even called. Some of the things that people say about you, they say you're too fat, you're too little, you're too black, you're too white, you're too uneducated, or whatever the enemy is using to try to dismantle, key word, dismantle, Carmen, your confidence. If you start believing the reports of the enemy, then you're not going to believe the report of God. And so when you, find, when you start accepting the reports of the enemy and you find yourself in the midst of a trial or midst of an in-between season, which is we all are in, instead of you embracing that season, you will begin to squander off that season because really we frustrated, we angry, we mad because of stuff that's going on in our life. But if we shift our mind today, if we make a conscious decision and say, you know what, some of the things I'm going through, you know what, I never even ask God, God, is this part of my in-between? God, what are you trying to accomplish through this situation? What are you trying to do in this trial? What are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to purge out of me? Because remember, if your trial is hot, fire represents purification. Yeah, 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 what is God trying to get out of you that's on the inside? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes we need to be dropped in the furnace of affliction. We good at quoting Romans 8, 28. What do it say? All things work together for... Well, why come your in-between ain't put it at all things? Why come that what you're experiencing right now, my God, ain't put it your all things working together? Sometimes some doors need to close. It ain't the devil. You was for sure, for sure, for sure that that was God, and he closed it. What is he trying to say? Will you still trust me? Will you still worship me? Will you still show up and meet me at 6 o'clock or 5 o'clock or whatever it is time? Will you still open up your Bible? You prayed, you fasted, and they told you they was going to give you the job, or they told you they was going to do something, and all of a sudden, you on your way, they say, oh, I'm sorry, the day before you get email, oh, we hired somebody else. Oh, you was on your way to get, that was my boo, boy, that was my girl. We had it rocking. What they say, we was, whatever you call it, I don't know what the word. And all of a sudden, she shifted on you. Now she shifted on you. We planned this thing out, and now it didn't happen the way we, keyword, we planned it out. It's part of your in-between. The Bible says God give it principles, and God takes it away. God will give you, and truth be told, if you are developing and growing in your belief system. Yeah. Peter said, I would not have you ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge. So if you are growing in your knowledge of God, when God takes something from you, if you had it for any length of time and now all of a sudden you don't have it, you say, my season's up with that. Amen. Mindset determines outcome. You see what I'm trying to say? And so therefore, you got to understand, my God, that God is in control of a person. Watch this man that gave God that has gave God an eternal yes. yes. Until you have given God an eternal yes, yes, you are in control. And stuff that's supposed to help you is hurting you because you're in control. We won't learn our lessons from the in-between if we don't understand that where I'm headed, where I'm going, 
what I'm going through. See, one thing about Joseph, he was able to adjust and adapt to what he was going through because his lifestyle was right. He wasn't attracting wrong people and sin. See what I'm trying to say? He wasn't cussing nobody out when they did him wrong inside the jails and stuff like that. He, he didn't get bitter. Come on, read the scriptures, my God. He kept a sanctified mindset. It don't say that Joseph ever got bitter. It don't say that Joseph ever talked bad about anybody. The scriptures don't say that, but I can just imagine because the Bible said that the Lord was with Joseph. Your dream will be fulfilled. Don't stay too long. Turn with me to the book of chapter 41. Let me close it with this. 41, God promoted and God prospered him. Don't you know that God, when God promotes you, he will prosper you? Your prosperity is connected to your promotion. <laughs> oh, my God. Christian, prosperity is connected to promotion. We got it reversed. We want prosperity without promotion. Genesis 41 started at verse 37. Watch this. Joseph interpreted the dream, said it'll be seven years of famine and seven years of plenty. And so you need to get somebody in place. Watch this, y'all. Joseph's suggestions were well received by, by Pharaoh and his officials. So Pharaoh asked his officials, watch this, y'all. Pharaoh asked his officials, can we find anyone else like this man? So obviously, obviously filled with the spirit of God. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God has revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you only. I, I'm sitting on my throne only I sitting on my throne will have a rank higher than yours. Verse 41, Pharaoh said to Joseph, I hereby put you in charge of the entire land. Jump down to verse 44, and Pharaoh said to him, I am, I am Pharaoh, but no one will lift a hand or a foot in this entire land without, in Egypt without your approval. Man, look at that right there. This man went from owning nothing to owning everything overnight. <laughs> because he kept the right attitude, he kept the right focus, he didn't get bitter, he embraced the in-between, he adjusted and adapted to the things that he was going through, he wasn't running around gossiping, he wasn't lying and talking about people, Christians, see what I'm trying to say? He was faithful to his work. Let me give you a little bit because time is at hand. When Joseph arrived in Egypt, he no longer had his coat. Remember, his father made a coat, the coat of many colors, my God. He lost his coat. They stripped him of it, but he never lost his character. Oh, my God, when God started taking stuff from you, will your character change? When God said, my God, who my God, God said, uh, I, I require that of you. The Bible says God give it and take it away. See, some of our identity is in the things that we have. See, when it's good, it's easy to show up and smile. When everything's like every time you pray, my God, God gives it to you, my God. That's easy, but my God, but when God take the very thing that your devotion is to, catch my words. When God take the very thing that your devotion is to, then what your character going to be like. Then what your attitude going to be like. Then what your devotion going to be like. It's easy to go hard for God when he giving me stuff. Joseph's coat was took, but his coat represented something. It represented position. It represented, God. his father was prophesying when he made the coat for him. It represented position. He was going to be overseer. Watch this. That's what this coat means, Christian. Y'all watch this. It represented his position. That's authority. My God, the overseer, authority, one in charge, authority. Come on, somebody. Oh, that coat had symbolic meaning to it. His father prophesied and his brothers hated him because they understood, my God, that this coat means something. People going to hate you because of the calling that's on your life. And the favor that's on your life. My God. He was a godly young man who walked before God in absolute integrity. He was a man of character and integrity, church. He could have adopted the ways and customs of this new land. He could have. Joseph could have begun to act just like Christians. <laughs> but he didn't. All I'm trying to say, 
He didn't, he didn't let. I told my wife, I said, whenever you go in, you change the environment. You never let the environment change you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Joseph never let his environment. See, thank you, Lord. Don't you realize how much authority you got when you properly taqwa? When you in right, righteousness is legal term in right standing. When you in right standing with God, Asia, Naila, do you understand how much power and authority you have yeah. that you can walk into an environment and God will shift the whole environment because of your presence. The Bible says when Joseph was there, the Lord was with Joseph and God gave him favor over the whole institution. Joseph stepped in and shifted everything. The leader didn't, the warden didn't have no concern about nothing because he found a man that he could put some stock in, he could put some trust in, my God. You have that much authority, at least a le oozing up out of your spirit when you're in proper alignment with God. That's why we can't allow our temples to get bitter. That's why we can't be running around and frustrated. That's why we got to get clean up all these little foxes. The little foxes are destroying the anointing. The little foxes are eating up the canker one, the vine in our own. Who are my vines? Come on, somebody. We have the authority and the power to shift an atmosphere. Shift your home. My wife would always tell me, I'm a little transparent, I'm careful though. I said, can I always tell, oh my God, uh, what type of spirit I'm in when I come through the door? She could be in the room, my God, and she know. By the way, I respond. And so she told, she said, I can adjust and adapt to wherever, wherever you at, I'm right there. If you hear I'm there, if you hear I'm there. Let's get it. Let's get it. So you see how she can adjust and adapt to her husband? Why can we can't adjust and adapt to the in-between? He's in charge. Here is the conclusion. Joseph was able to embraces in between because when he got into situations Joseph already like Daniel purposed in his heart meaning his mind that I would not sin I defy the king Tell my God so when you are faced with trials when Joseph was faced with situations Joseph already had a made up mind see in this hour that you living in we living in it's gonna take already a made up mind you can't wait till you get, oh my God, in situations. You can't wait till you go in environments. You got to already have your mind set no matter what comes out those doors. Or no matter what comes through those doors, my mind is set. I will not become like my environment. I will not let circumstance situation affect me and cause me to be like it instead of me changing it. Come on, somebody. You got to have your mind made up. That's why I teach y'all, Vontage, my God, you will not be like, mm, everybody at the school. Because everybody at the school ain't going hard for Christ because it's a Christian school. That somebody is hurting. Many of those kids were sent off to school because their parents got money. My God, they don't know who they are. They're trying to find themselves. They're trying to latch on to something. That's why they go to everything and get involved in everything because they're trying to find themselves. That's why you got to find yourself so you can be able to go back and affect this campus, man of God. Mm, mm, mm. God's going to begin to send people to you, man of God. All right, he's going to begin to send people and all my students over there, my God. It's important that you find your plan and discover your assignment, my God. When you go back, you serve your assignment to the school. And when you know what your assignment is, you don't get involved in anything. Yeah. If it don't kiss my assignment, if it's not going to help me fulfill my assignment, I don't want to be a part of it because everybody else. So what is popular to them don't mean it's popular to God. That's just an encouragement. That's just an encouragement. That's just an encouragement. My God made up mine. Somebody point to you. Oh, Lenny taught us something yesterday. Everybody do like this. Men, let's stand up. All the men, I'm finna bring it in. I know I'm over. Let's stand up. Let's show these ladies what we did. Now, now y'all don't use this against y'all husband, boyfriends, and baby daddy. Now. I know. Uh, men, Lenny taught us. We grabbing our ears is what we're doing. And 95% of our problems, men and women, under the sound of my voice, is in between your ears. It's the way you think. You may be seated. The Spirit of God led me to say that because Joseph, even though he had his mind made up, so whenever he got in situations, whenever he was faced with the in-between, the in-between didn't affect him. He affected it. It takes a made up mind in this hour, y'all. And when your mind is made up, God desires and his wills to prosper you. Okay? You have to set boundaries. You have to set boundaries. Quit crossing the boundaries. I had to learn a lot of that stuff the tough way. That's why I'm able to talk about it today. Quit crossing the boundaries that you set. Draw a line in the sand. 
Make your mind up that I will not compromise. Oh, don't get too close to that line. Yes, Joseph had boundaries. You got to set in your mind, write this down, what you will do and what you won't do. What you will do. Now, don't tell God what you will do and what you won't do. You set boundaries about what you, oh, my God, I can't allow you to mishandle me, homie. You can't mishandle me. See, women, let me speak to your, conf your confidence, your self-esteem. Y'all know I build y'all over her. My God, you, you shouldn't be letting nobody mishandle you. You shouldn't be letting nobody talk bad to you and lie to you and, and, and tell you this and tell you that and, and always got excuses. And, and when you go over his house and he go over your house, I go out to dinner, you can't look at his phone and, and all that. You're like, you know, my phone is my phone and your phone, your phone. And, uh, see, that, see, 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 that's all. You're already starting wrong. See what I'm trying to say? And don't give up too much personal information, students. Everybody don't even know everything about you. You just met him. Why are you telling him everything about you? Boundaries, 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 boundaries. We have all made mistakes. Lord, bring me on in. We have all made mistakes, but close the doors. Close the door. Don't keep the doors open because you open them before close them now. Understand, that's a gift from God. They don't blow on everybody. Yeah, yeah. Boundaries. Settle and purpose in your mind, and I'm through. What you will do and what you won't do. I'm able to say this because I put, because I, I know you're my sin when I was in prison. I'm going on to what? Y'all dusty. I'm going on to see what a saved life going to be like. That's why I, when God brought me out of prison, I never went back to the world because I purposed in my heart that I was going to serve God and I wasn't going to be no hypocrite. So when trials and tribulations and stuff came, I was already settled. See, I'm speaking from experience. I'm not just giving you theology. I'm giving you my life. That's why I can teach the way God allowed me to teach because it speaks to my life. I made my man. I told my wife. I said, baby, I'm, I'm going hard for God. She said, okay, okay, that's good, Jew. We'll see what you do when you get out. <laughs> why? Because I've made so many promises to her, my God, and I never kept them. But I never tried to give my life to Christ. When God saved me, only time I ever accepted Christ is April the 3rd of 95, and I ain't never went back. Never, ever went back to nothing. <laughs> and so, and so, and so. Uh, this is to my brother. This is to my brother. You know what I'm talking about? Who I met with? Who I met with uh, after after the encounter? I'm just gonna speak it in the atmosphere. It took my wife two and a half years to trust me. Cause when I left, she didn't trust me. Cause I was a liar. I was a hypocrite. Cause I told her I was gonna stop doing what I was doing. I didn't stop doing it. So that's hypocrisy. Yeah. Some of us are still hypocrites in the church, but I never was a hypocrite in the church. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it took two and a half years. For her to trust me. So what did I have to do? I had to model. Yeah. I had to walk. Yeah. And truth be told, she know this, but truth be told, me modeling and walking wasn't necessarily about her. Because my wife understand my life depends on my relationship with God. If it ain't no God, I won't stay clean and sober. If it ain't no God, I won't, I'll go back to the penitentiary if I don't die before I get there. See, my wife understands. That's why we've been able to embrace our in-betweens as pastors. Because she understands, my God, who my God did. If this boy ain't got God, he ain't going to make it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So she don't do, she don't interfere mm -hmm. with my commitment to God. Because she know if it ain't no God, it ain't no marriage. Yeah, yeah. That right, baby. Yeah. Everything I do is strategic. And so some of y'all seen me and my wife try to get our rhythm. And that's our word. We have found our rhythm in ministry together. And so that's why she's smiling. That's why she's happy. Because I had to adjust men and I had to adapt. And I had to make it about her instead of making it about church. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. You better leave me alone, Pastor Teddy. <laughs> Amen. I give God the glory. So God prospered him. And let me do my conclusion. God used the sorrows of Joseph's life to shape him into the man he desired him to become. The sorrows of Joseph's life is what he used to shape him into the person of the man he needed to become. It wasn't the good times. As I've taught y'all, God does his greatest work in the valley, not on the mountain. The valley prepares you for the mountain. So even Joseph, Pastor Champ, was in the valley. The prison, the pit, all oh, that's valley. 
See what I'm trying to say? But it was preparing him for the mountain. Second as prime minister. See what I'm trying to say? God had to change his culture. I mean, he had to teach him uh, new, new language and stuff, as I told y'all. He had to learn how to adjust and adapt. He had, he had to learn how to wait on God because after he interpreted the dreams of the cupbearer and, and, and the baker, uh, he said, don't forget about me, star. But two years, the Bible says, passed. He helped the man get out of prison, and the man said, I got you. And when he got out, he forgot about him. Two years has passed. You know why he forgot about it? Because it wasn't time. I will, I promise you I'm finna close with this one. I promise you, I ain't gonna lie no more. <laughs> It wasn't time for Joseph to be remembered by the armor bearer. Even though when Joseph prophesied, please hear this. He told him he's going to be put back in your position. The baker's going to get his head cut off. And it happened just like Joseph interpreted. The armor bearer was put back in position. The baker was beheaded. But then the king had a dream. And he called all of his administration to the chambers. Kingdom talk. To the chambers. So I tell you, I come in the office, you're approaching the king. He called him into the king's chambers, all of his administration, and told them the dream. The, the king, Pharaoh, nobody could interpret it. And so the armor bird said, I'm reminded today of a Hebrew slave that's sitting down in a six by nine on, prison cell yeah. who, and, he, and he told the king about I'm coming up and the other one's gonna be killed. And so here we go, here we go, here we go. And the king, thank y'all for allowing me a little time. And the king said, send for him. But before Joseph came, see, this is a kingdom principle. You're going to like this, Jakari. Stay right there, Dominique. Listen to me, y'all. When the king said, send for him, the Bible says the first thing Joseph did was shave, change his clothes, and then he approached the king. See, that's very symbolic that you cannot approach a king any kind of way. Now, that's the natural side. Let's look at spiritual. When you come into church, you're gossiping, you're talking. The Bible says, be careful how you come in and out of the presence of the Lord. See, back then, my God, God killed people for mishandling, mishandling his glory. Oh, he killed people for mishandling. As Uzzah, as, 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 uh, is it Uzzah? Huh? Uzziah touched, it, touched the, the thing in the corner, and fell over dead. David got mad at God for that. He couldn't understand, how can, I, how, can I, how, can I, how can I execute your kingdom when you're killing everybody? That's why you better thank God for his mercy yeah, yeah, yeah. and his grace. But Joseph, but, jo but the king said, come here, Joseph, come here. And he shaved. Boy, you like your daddy. He shaved. Come forth. He shaved. He changed his clothes. This is going to help you and pick all of you up out of your cave. You can sit down. Timing with God is everything. Even though Job told, I mean, Joseph told the man of God not to forget about me. God could not prosper him until the king had a need. Watch this, watch this. The warden did not have the, Brian, the warden did not have the authority to promote him. Only the king could. And so, my God, my God, Joseph couldn't be delivered out of his prison until the king had a need. That could nobody in the kingdom fulfill. So that person that was down there in that prison being refined, that was dropped, abandoned, left for dead, was the very answer to the king's dream. And so when they sent for him, the king said, and he told him, he said, best of his history, you are the man. It was all a part of God's plan. You got to embrace your in-between. The things that got you in so much pain right now, if you begin to shift 
your mind because your mind affects your emotions. Since I say we very bitter, we very angry, and I understand because we don't understand everything. But I thank God, Sister Lisa, y'all, for Bishop Ellis who helped me understand some of my in-betweens, things that I had to go through, which I've earned the right to stand before y'all and help y'all walk through y'all in-betweens. So with every head bow, please, this is important, because we got to clean up our heart like we did, men, at the encounter. There may be some things that God has said to you, men, that you know, uh, character-wise, or it's things we may have said that we have not kept our word. I don't care nothing about we went to an encounter yesterday. Women, I don't care about us going to an encounter on, yet, on, 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 on last week. If there's some things that God has said in your heart, things that you have not fulfilled, things that you have not done, if there's some situations, my God, that you have got angry and bitter about, you should be making your way down to the altar. And if you are here and you have never ever accepted God and made him Lord and Savior over your life, let me see your hand. Anybody who wants to give their life to Christ today, this is a good day to give your life to Christ. I see your hand, my brother. Anybody else? Anybody else? You want to say, you know what? I'm ready. I'm ready. I've been messing up, my God. I'm just ready to come to the Lord. I need some help. I can identify with that man. He didn't sit up there and talk to me about some stuff that I need. If that's you, there go another hand back there. Who wants to give their life to Christ? Who wants to make him Lord and Savior? Who wants to make him Lord? Raise your hand. Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to ask that you come, my brother. Stand, Pastor. He's coming to your left. Woman of God back there in the back. If you choose to come, you're welcome to come too. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that we are sensitive at 205 South Sheridan when you are working with the people of God. Father God, I thank you, Father God, that we will not allow, Father God, tradition. We, not, we will not allow any idol. We will not allow or conform to anything that would interfere with your people having an opportunity, Lord, to get to your presence. Lord, I thank you, Father God, for the anointing of healing, restoration, and forgiveness, and strength, and clarity that you have deposited inside this church. Father God, heal every man and every woman and every child that has responded to your voice. Lord, I thank you for the two souls that committed their lives for the very first time inside of 205 South Sherman. Father God, I pray that you strengthen the men and women that has come down for the journey. Father God, we have asked you to forgive us for mishandling the in-betweens. We embrace and we understand that as you was with Joseph, you are with us. And we understand now that you are working behind the scenes. And everything that we may be feeling and everything that we may be going through and everything that we may experience in the future, everything ain't the devil. Some of the things you allow because you are executing and preparing us to fulfill our assignment. So, Father God, we thank you for giving us a chance to hear a word, Father God, that will strengthen us. We will adjust and adapt to your word. And we will embrace, Father God, our side. No more fighting your will for our lives. We let go. We surrender. We let go. We surrender. We let go and we surrender to that which you have told us to do. Father God, we will fulfill our dream that you have given us, especially the ones that are straight from you. Oh, my God. Lord, so help us to fulfill the mandate that is on our lives. Help us, Father God, to be that light to a dying world. Help us, Father God, to look for opportunities, Father God, on our job, in the marketplaces, in the school system. Father God, to be a light, because somebody needs the God that we serve. Help us to become disciple makers. Help us to look to be a blessing to other people. We advance and grow your kingdom one disciple at a time. So, Father God, I thank you. Thank you for trusting me and my wife and the staff for going off for Christ Church with such a heavy mandate and a heavy responsibility dealing with the lives in the soulless realm of men and women in this church, Father. I pray that when they leave my physical presence, don't let them leave your spiritual presence. And to my new two people that has given their life to Christ, increase their hunger, increase their appetite to read your word. Help them separate from contamination. Help them separate from people, places, and things, Father God, that would hinder them from developing and growing and becoming disciples so they can one day become disciple makers to advance your kingdom. Strengthen these women that's crying out. You know, 
and what they're experiencing. We thank you. We thank you for everyone that has responded to your voice through this man of God. I bless them. I empower them. Strengthen them. And I release them into your care. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on, everybody, say amen. Let's give God a hand. Hallelujah. You are dismissed.